Good day YouTube, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of Cryptolite. Today, I want to introduce you to A-Chain, a new blockchain platform. A-Chain is actually a project that has been around since 2014, so it's actually older than Ethereum or NEO. It currently already has 80 dApps built on it, which is double that of NEO, and its Chinese community is about 2 million people. That's massive. The reason why A-Chain is still unknown to many people in the West is because until the start of 2018, it was purely a Chinese product with a Chinese website and Chinese white paper only. It only really began marketing itself to the Western world at the start of 2018, and since then it's gained a lot of traction because of its forking mechanism. You know how Bitcoin forked into Bitcoin Cash and everyone who held Bitcoin received free Bitcoin Cash? And the same for Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. When Ethereum forked, everyone who held Ether also received free Ethereum Classic. Well, A-Chain uses a forking method to scale, and so holders of A-Chain are potentially set up to receive a lot of airdrops from the forks over time. Because of this, A-Chain is now one of the favorite platforms for many token investors. To find out more about A-Chain, keep watching this video. A-Chain describes itself as building a boundless blockchain reality. To understand what this means, you have to understand the technology of this project and I'll try and describe it for you simply. In the classic blockchain, all dApps are built on the blockchain and use the blockchain's computational power. A well-known example of this is Ethereum, and Ethereum was designed to run at 1,000 transactions per second, but because of the number of dApps that are built on it, currently each dApp is only running at 13 transactions per second. The new popular model a lot of third generation blockchains are currently using is called sidechains. So each dApp then holds their own mini blockchain that is linked to the original blockchain and has similar characteristics. For example, the sidechains will have the same economy, same consensus algorithm as the main chain, etc. A-chain solves scalability not by using sidechains but by using what is known as hard forks. A hard fork is a new blockchain that shares the same history as a chain until the point that it is born. And from the time that it is born, the fork will basically have its own technology and is linked and is not linked to a chain anymore. The advantage of having a fork is that the fork is fully customizable. So for example, a game app might need high transaction speed, but the game app can accept low security. So their blockchain or their fork chain will tailor to that. A legal firm making a debt for their firm will need a very high level of security, but they can probably accept a lower transaction speed. So then their blockchain will look different from the game map. So by providing forks and high customization, A-Chain will basically allow any debt to build any blockchain for its requirements. Strictly speaking, A-Chain is not a blockchain platform, but a blockchain network. To be a network or a single project, A-Chain needs to find some way for the different blockchains, the different forks, to link with each other. This is done through a technology that is known as the Value Exchange Protocol, or VEP for short. Interoperability is currently a very big issue in the blockchain protocol world, and VEP effectively solves the interoperability for blockchains within the network by providing two things. Firstly, it provides cross-chain communication, and secondly, it provides cross-chain smart contract invocation. Cross-chain smart contracts invocation basically means that the same smart contract can run by pooling information from two different chains okay so one chain could be about borrowing loans and the other chain about personal credit i could set up a smart contract that can run between both chains so that the chain that is granting the loan will be activated to grant the loan when the credit rating hits a certain standard on the second blockchain so this is a very powerful feature that allows you to run smart contracts off two different chains one thing I need to point out is that when we talk about interoperability in blockchain on other platforms, we are generally talking about interoperability between two different entire blockchain projects. So for example, NEO will have their ecosystem, ICON will have their ecosystem, but the interoperability of ICON allows communication between ICON and NEO. In this case, VEP, even though it's a very powerful interoperability solution, VEP only addresses interoperability within the A-Chain network, not outside. Now, A-Chain did mention that they are hoping to 
create VEP to extend to embracing non-blockchain data, so other enterprises' data. Uh, so this is not confirmed yet, but it is something that they are hoping to achieve by this year. However, there has been no mention of any interoperability solution with other blockchains that I know of yet. Consensus algorithm is the engine of a blockchain project, of a blockchain platform. Just like the engine of a car will determine how fast the car can run, the consensus algorithm to a very large degree will determine how fast the blockchain can run. Bitcoin uses proof of work, which is the most secure consensus algorithm, but also the slowest. Proof of stake was the next popular consensus algorithm where you would stake your coins to reach consensus. But proof of stake had a weakness where it allowed monopolization of the whole system by very big players. So then the next favorite consensus algorithm was delegated proof of stake or DPoS, which was created to introduce voting into the proof of stake process to ensure fairness. A chain has designed their own very unique consensus algorithm that is called the Result Delegated Proof of Stake or RD POS. Unfortunately, their white paper doesn't really explain what RD POS is, it just describes the benefits of RD POS. And the benefits of RD POS is that it reduces congestion and it optimizes the process of the consensus um, algorithm, thus allowing for a transaction speed of 1000 transactions per second. So I'm a little bit concerned actually about the transaction speed and I'll explain it to you why a little bit later in this video. But let's quickly take a look at the rest of the tech. A-Chain's initial programming language was Lua. Lua is a very common programming language in the real world, but we haven't seen many blockchain projects use it. Lua is a very light and simple coding language which offers a lot of flexibility and speed. And flexibility is one of the main features of the A-Chain network. Their virtual machine is therefore called the Lua virtual machine and it is worth noting that A-Chain is making its technology language agnostic, meaning that when they first started they only used Lua but they are designing themselves and upgrading themselves to be compatible with many other languages including Java, Python, C++, Go and even Solidity, so basically every language you can think of. Another aspect to promote ease of use of the A-Chain um, network is what is known as BAS or blockchain as a service. BAS is basically an incubator feature to help new developers to use their technology. For those of you who don't know what an incubator is, an incubator is like a, a team of people or a technology on the platform such or protocol such as um, A-Chain which lowers the technical expertise required so that people with basic coding knowledge who don't really know specific cryptographic kind of knowledge people with basic coding knowledge will be able to use the network so in this case people with very basic knowledge can create a fork on a-chain in one day that's how easy it is so a-chain are making it very easy for developers to join the a-chain network and achieve mass adoption and one of the results of that is that currently they already have 80 over 80 i think it's 85 working depths on their platform which is double that of neo a-Chain also has a great wallet. It's easy to find on their website and it's very easy to use it as well. It's a zip file that you download from their website. You unzip it and it's ready to use. You don't even have to install it on your computer. There is also an entire document on their website that teaches you how to use the wallet and it's a very clear document with diagrams and pictures. It's a great document. A-Chain has or had a feature that is called the loyalty program, where if you use their wallet or a compatible wallet, you could lock your tokens into a loyalty program. And over time, there will be five snapshots based on the growing size of the A-Chain blockchain. And token holders who join this program, loyalty program, will be rewarded with free A-Chain. The way it works is the earlier you join, the more you receive because the rewards from each phase is the average amount of A-Chain. So if you join in the fifth phase, okay, the phase five, your amount that you stake, um, you will only receive one fifth of it because it has to be averaged across all five phases. But if you had joined uh, since the first phase and you stake the same amount, in the last phase, just in phase five alone, you will receive five times the amount uh, compared to someone who staked the same amount in just the fifth phase. So I'm not really sure I'm a fan of the way they calculated um, the loyalty rewards because I think that by doing so, it really disincentivizes new users from joining the loyalty program. Because new users, 
would think that they will gain so much less than the early investor. And for me as a token investor, why would I want to join a program where I am uh, disadvantaged in such a great way against early users? I might as well go to other options, other projects like VeChain or NEO, where the staking rewards will be the same or equal for all participants at any point in the history. So this is basically the technology of A-Chain in a nutshell. But what I want to do now is just to mention to you some points of consideration that I think is worth thinking about if we're going to invest in this project. The first is their transaction speed. So as I mentioned before, I'm a little bit concerned about their transaction speed. Now, A-Chain was designed back in 2014. It's a very old project. If you look at older projects like Ethereum, who are designed around the same time, Ethereum is currently only running at 13 transactions per second. A-Chain is currently already running at 1,000 transactions per second for each chain. So the, the comparison was simply mind-blowing back in 2014, 2015, and 16. But 1,000 transactions per second these days isn't that amazing. To give you an idea about the numbers we are looking at, okay, about one year ago to six months ago, most new blockchain platforms were targeting about uh, 1,000 to 2,500 transactions per second. And then blockchain technology kind of hit this bottleneck at the start of this year of 2,500. Very few um, blockchains could break through that 2,500 magic number. But currently, with sharding and other scalability solutions coming in, quite a few blockchains are already reaching 10,000 transactions per second and some even more. Some of you might be thinking, no, A-Chain can scale to millions of transactions per second. And the network of A-Chain can scale to millions of transactions per second because the network speed is the total addition of all the different fault blockchains added up together. But as a company, if I'm building a dApp on A-Chain, I'm not using the whole network, I'm only using one blockchain, one fork. And currently, the maximum transaction speed of one blockchain or fork is only 1,000 transactions per second. To put things in perspective, let me give you some examples. Visa is currently running anywhere between 45,000 to 65,000 transactions per second. Facebook is running at like a million transactions per second. In fact, Facebook has 54,000 likes per second. So 1,000 transactions per second is definitely not enough for enterprises to build apps. A-Chain has a lot of dApps on their platforms. If you look at the dApps on their platforms, the dApps are very similar to the kind of dApps that are currently built on Ethereum. For example, Ethereum has CryptoKitties. A-Chain has a dApp that is called CryptoDocs, which has a very similar interface to CryptoKitties. So for that kind of dApps and that kind of purposes, no problem. A-Chain technology can handle it easily. But A-Chain was actually designed for enterprise use, meaning big companies. Their VEP, their BAS, their Lua virtual machine, these are all technologies that was designed for A-Chain to be used by big enterprises. But at the moment, the infrastructure, the transaction speed simply doesn't support enterprise use. This is why, despite having over 80 dApps already built on their network currently, not a single one of those 80 dApps are enterprise built dApps. This point is a consideration, okay? It's not a major worry because A-Chain is a forking network. If A-Chain decided to upgrade its technology, it will be a lot easier for them to implute, uh, implement a scaling solution compared to a big platform like Ethereum. But I definitely think that moving forward, the scalability of each individual fork blockchain is something that needs to be addressed on A-Chain. A second point of consideration for me is the token value and the return of interest. We always say that as token investors, we are not invested in the success of the company, but the success of the token. We are different from shareholders who buy shares. When you are a shareholder and you buy a share of the company, the success of the company means that your shares will go up. But token holders do not own a share of the company. We only own the currency of the company. And in some very unusual cases, example Ripple, the technology of the company doesn't actually need to use the token. And so the company can become very successful, but the token price doesn't really rise. 
A chain is a forking network, which means that the token use of each forked blockchain is completely unrelated to token use on A chain. So even though they have 80 dApps currently built on with their technology, their token use has not gone up 80 times. In fact, their token use has not gone up very much at all. There's almost a plateau effect on the actual use case or demand of the A chain token because the use of the A chain token is limited to a single chain on the network, which is the mother chain of A chain. A lot of investors are thinking that A chain token price will shoot up the way Ethereum is shooting up because Ethereum has a lot of debts and so they think that the more debts A chain has, the more demand there will be for the tokens. But I don't think that that will be the case because in Ethereum's case, all 800 debts are built on the Ethereum network and require Ether to function. So there is a very high demand for Ether. But none of the fork blockchains will be using A-Chain tokens. They will all have their individual tokens. So I think that A-Chain's token price will still rise as the market inflates, right? As the crypto market goes up, all the coins in the market will go up. And so A-Chain will also follow the market and A-Chain will inflate to some degree with the market. But as investors, when we are choosing amongst the many different coins to invest in, we want to choose a coin that is more likely to inflate more than others. And the additional inflation comes from the token demand, which comes from token use. And I don't see A-chain tokens or ACT tokens having great escalating demand. Some people are hoping for more loyalty programs, but there is a limit to how many loyalty programs A-chain can do because they can't indefinitely keep giving free coins away. The main return of interest cannot be from loyalty programs. Some people might hope that the return of interest or the ROI for token investors is not so much the actual A-chain tokens, but in the fork chain airdrops. And that would be right. That is the place that you would expect the most returns as an investor from a forking network. Or is it? Unlike the Bitcoin fork to Bitcoin Cash or the Ethereum fork to Ethereum Classic, you are not guaranteed a fork from uh, you're not guaranteed an airdrop from these forks. You see, A-Chain has set it up so that it is easy and attractive for users to use the network, but the way it's set up for, to make it attractive for them is that it is completely optional for the new fox to drop free coins or not. They can choose not to drop any free coins, and the amount that they drop is completely variable as well. I spent about two whole days asking around on their social media, and from what I could find, out of the 85 dApps that they currently have on their platform, um, how many actually have dropped to coins for the tokens? Now, the information isn't available on the websites, and the answers I got from various people across their social media was Kcash, SelfSell, LinkEye, BOS, OLC, and ABTC, which is now AOA. So a total of six steps only. Maybe there's more dApps that have dropped coins, but I couldn't get any more names from uh, their social media. Even the admins on the social media groups didn't seem to know of any other dApps. Now, maybe it's not just the quantity of the number of dApps that are dropping, because the number of dApps at the moment seem to be less than 10% of the new fork blockchains are actually dropping um, coins. But maybe it's not the quantity, but it's the quality, right? So for example, Neo uh, platform, not all of their dApps will drop an airdrop, but the ones that do like Ontology, it's a very great project and now the Ontology airdrop is worth a lot. Uh, so it's not just about the number of airdrops, it's about the quality of the airdrop. I looked up the six coins that I mentioned before that have dropped coins for, that I know that have dropped coins for the A-chain um, holders. Two of them, OLC and ABTC, I couldn't find. Kcash doesn't have a market cap on coin market cap yet, despite the fact that it's already been listed on the market since January. So something's wrong there. The three air fork, uh, the three fork airdrops that I could find returns on, uh, Linkai, SelfSell, and Bosscoin, were all very small market caps. Bosscoin was the biggest with a 44 million market cap, and the other two were less than 25 million. So as a token investor, you have to be aware that when you invest in A-Chain, the bulk of your returns will not be in the A-Chain tokens, but from these steps. And you have to decide whether these steps are worth your investment or not. The thing is, A-Chain doesn't actually quality control the depths on their network. They're very keen to get users on their network, and they set the bar very low for users to use um, their network and 
create a fork, but anyone can build on them. There is no quality control to control um, what kind of projects are built on their network. So that's something for token investors to be aware of. I don't know these um, projects in detail, and maybe these projects are great projects. Um, but take a look. My advice is take a look at a platform like Neo, where you know even though Neo only has half the number of dApps compared to Achain on their platform, but a lot of the projects on Neo, like Zpin, Ontology, The Key, Next, Switch Neo, and more, are really good projects that um, any investor will invest in in the longer term. And then decide for yourself after looking at the different dApps on the different platforms whether it's the same quality of dApps and the project that you want to believe and invest in. The last point of consideration I have to mention is again related to the types of dApps that Achain builds on its, in, on its network and is regarding their interoperability use. So Achain uses VEP as its interoperability solution. And as we mentioned before, VEP is a very good technology, but it's only useful within the network. It cannot be used to connect to other blockchains which means that dApps on A-Chain are really constrained to interoperability or communicating and working with other dApps within the A-Chain network only. Okay, so this is unlike other true interoperability platforms like OneChain, Icon, Aeon, etc. But what's more than that is that the types of dApps um, that uh, a dApp has to work with on A-Chain is not many, okay? So to give you an example of what I'm trying to say, other enterprise platforms, for example, VeChain or Sophia TX, are also platforms that are targeting enterprises. But those platforms have a very specific technology within every sidechain. Uh, example is a technology like SAP compatible technology that makes their platform very attractive towards enterprises. A-Chain's core features is flexibility, and A-Chain doesn't actually offer any enterprise specific technology. So it's very good, but very generic technology, but because it's so generic and it doesn't have enterprise specific technology, if I'm an enterprise coming in to build on A-Chain, or uh, coming to build on, black, on blockchain, I look at A-Chain and A-Chain's transaction speed is slow and it doesn't have any specific enterprise um, facility, but something like VeChain will have multiple enterprise specific uh, features as well as they are running at 10 times the speed of A-Chain. So why wouldn't I build on VeChain instead of A-Chain? Now, the result of having a very good generic technology, which A-Chain has, is that the variety of dApps that will be built on the network will be huge. So consider this, right? Firstly, if I build on A-Chain, the dApp that I built is only operable within other dApps of, on the A-Chain network. Secondly, the other dApps that I can partner with or communicate with, the quality of those dApps are not guaranteed. Okay, but more than that, more worrying than that is that the other dApps may belong to a completely different field that is not even related to my project. So why would I want to uh, communicate or have interoperability with them? So again, take a look at this list. And this is only a list of um, eight projects that eight, nine projects that are currently on their platform on their website. But I think the actual number is a lot higher than that. They have over 80 dApps, right? But if you just look at these nine that they list on their website, there's crypto dogs, right? What does crypto dogs as a dApp have to do with self Xiao or Linkai? Nothing. So they may have the best interoperability technology to communicate with each other, but the question is, do the dApps need to use that technology? There is no reason for these dApps to interact with each other. Now, I'm sure that as the network grows and you have you know, hundreds of dApps on the A-Chain network, there will be some dApps that will want to interact with a few other dApps on the network but the degree of interoperability is going to be so much less than an intentional ecosystem like VeChain or Sophia TX, where every dApp is targeted at enterprise. Every dApp is an enterprise dApp, and so they have a lot of reason for interoperability to happen. Okay, Or Neo that works on identity base, or Tron who is aiming for entertainment industry. So to build an ecosystem, you need to be very intentional and clear about your niche market that you're targeting, which is not the impression that I'm getting with A-Chain. A-Chain's website doesn't actually have a team member page. So most websites, blockchain websites, if you go to the website, there is a page that shows you the resume of the team members, the different photos, and a little bit of a spiel on them. A-Chain actually doesn't have a single team member page. So this is the first legit blockchain project I've seen that doesn't have a team member page. 
Um, from side readings and videos, their CEO is Mr. Choi Meng, who is the person in this picture. He is a very successful young man. He graduated from Beijing University in 2010, so it's not that long ago. But already he's won the title of outstanding entrepreneur at the age younger than 30 years old. He's also been in the blockchain industry since 2013. So he's really one of the pioneer guys who has been around for quite a long time and he understands the technology. Unfortunately, we have no information again from their website about any other team members, any advisors, any partners, or if they have any at all. I don't know. In the live stream, they did say that currently their team is already over 40 members and growing. So it sounds like it's a very huge team with a lot of developers and um, a hardworking team, in other words. This is their roadmap, and their roadmap is um, done in three stages. The first stage is Singularity, which focuses on the network security and scalability as well as the smart contracts. In their white paper, Singularity was set from the date of 2014 to 2016, but on their website, Singularity is set as the first quarter of 2018, so it's a bit different. The second stage is Galaxy which according to their white paper was from 2016 to 2017, but according to their website, that's in the second quarter of 2018, which is now. Uh, Galaxy focuses on building subchains for different industries and building on the customization aspect of the project or technology. The third stage of their roadmap is the Cosmos stage. Uh, Cosmos stage in their white paper set the date as 2017 to 2018, but on their website it says that it's in the third quarter of 2018. Um, and this stage is focusing on the BAS and the VEP technology. So as mentioned before, uh, with their VEP technology, they are working on connecting enterprise databases to non-blockchain resources. So there certainly is quite a big discrepancy in terms of time frame from the white paper to um, the website. So I wonder whether the white paper was initially pitched for those time frames, but then they got delayed and this is the new time frame that they've given themselves. So I, I'm a bit unclear about this. Um, the good thing, I guess, when you look at their roadmap is that unlike many other blockchain protocols who are very early in the phase of development, A-Chain is actually very far into their development. Okay, uh, In terms of their tech, there is little or no risk that it cannot be developed. It, it, that means that they are so far ahead that you almost assume that they will get the technology out. Um, whilst this sounds like common sense, it's not because a lot of other projects are so early in their development phase. And in blockchain, what, if you've been around for a little while, you know that the white paper can sound very good in conceptual phase, but when the actual product comes out, it looks quite different. But you don't have that risk with A-Chain because they've been around for a while and their development is very far ahead. Um, and already they have, I would say, you know, they have already developed what the white paper promises. So that's A-Chain, guys. Um, that's my thoughts on A-Chain. I think overall the forking technology that they use is a very interesting technology. I think it has its pros, but I think it also has some glaring weaknesses. In my opinion, forking is a great solution for the technology, but not necessarily for setting up an ecosystem or economy or network. Um, a blockchain protocol project is more than just technology. It's about having a very efficient economy as well, um, especially for the token investor. That's what we're interested in. And I, I don't feel that A-Chain has that. But as I always say, you know, it doesn't depend on how a project starts. It depends on how the project ends, which depends on the team behind the project. No project starts off as perfect. But if the project has a very good team behind it, then the team will change and improve the project and lead it to success. So I think that A-Chain, despite having been around for quite a long time, is still in its early stages and there's still a lot of room for A-Chain to change and grow. Uh, I'll be very interested to see where the team takes the project from here in the future. Let me know what you think of A-Chain in the comments below. Are you invested into A-Chain? Do you love A-Chain and why do you love A-Chain? None of this is professional advice, of course. This is just me sharing my very unprofessional thoughts with you. So always do your own homework and make your own decisions. Thank you so much for joining me. If you found this video helpful or informative, please give us that like and subscribe to help our channel to grow. And do also join our Telegram group for more informative discussion on very new coins with great potential like this one. Have a lovely start of the weekend, guys, and I will catch up again with you guys very soon.